Hello, and welcome to Stefudal. I am, adventurously, Steph. And there's like 300 more of you now, which is both awesome and terrifying. Welcome, and thank you so much for deciding to stick around, whether you subscribed over the last year or within the last week. I am eternally grateful. A while back, my friend Daisy, Blurry Creative over on Instagram, asked me if I'd like to take part in an Adventure Zone collab, making dolls based on various characters from the podcast. And an idea sprang to mind that was about 80% fully formed, so I said yes. I'll be making the Void Fish, which is, uh... Well, I'm gonna let Griffin McElroy describe them for you. You look up and you see in the tank, clear as day, Zordon. Uh, it's almost like Zordon, but not at all. Uh, this giant, almost like jellyfish with just gi enormous, like it is the size of a whale, but, but you know, jellyfish uh, shaped with thousands of, of tendrils reaching off its body. And inside of its, its body, you can almost make out like a, like a galaxy, like a swirling nebula of, of, of stars and, Am I right to assume that this is beautiful? It's it is beautiful. Yeah, it's I mean it's fucking super weird. Um you have never seen anything like this and you get the distinct impression that very few people in existence have ever seen anything like this. So uh that's a lot, but I've got a plan. So let's get started. I'll be using Calamari from the Great Scarier Reef line of Monster High. I think she's an ideal base for the void fish. Fun fact, the Voidfish's official gender is listed as Voidfish, so I'll be referring to them with they them pronouns from here on out. I use my hairdryer to soften the vinyl and then remove the head. I cut the hair off close to the scalp. Using a flathead screwdriver, I scrape away the glue and the rest of the hair before pulling it out through the neck hole with tweezers. I remove the factory paint with pure acetone. Now that it's all clean, I'll set the head aside for a bit and focus on the body. I'll be changing the body color quite drastically, so I start by coloring in all the joints with a black sharpie. It's time to use one of the stars of this repaint, Black 3.0 from Culture Hustle. It's supposedly the darkest, maddest black acrylic paint available on the market, which sounds like the perfect base for something called a void fish. I begin applying thin layers all over the body in sections. While that's drying, let's prep and test acrylic paints for the galaxy effect. This is a blue to black color shift paint from Pebio, and it looks awesome over black 3.0. To add a bit more color variety, I'm going to mix my own paint using this duo red blue pearl X powder and super base matte medium. It's a lighter blue than the other paint and still maintains a bit of a pinky tone. I begin splotching on very watered down paint randomly, mimicking the effect of nebulas. I start with the blue black and swirl in red blue accents and black 3.0 on the edges of the shapes. I repeat this process over a few layers all over the body. Then I begin refining the shapes, carving out the black areas and brightening the others. Once I'm happy with the result, I use more super base to attach iridescent snow glitter to strategic points of the body to look like galaxies. I pick out individual stars with white acrylic paint. Moving back to the head, I first paint the scalp black to prepare for the reroute. To help try and protect the paint, I add a layer or two of matte Mod Podge. 
I'll be using this blueberry candy nylon from Doll Hair Emporium. To make sure I don't ruin the lovely hair texture, I'm going to be using a Riru tool for the first time ever. I don't know why, but I've honestly been scared to try one until now. I create my own tool using a craft knife handle and a tapestry needle, cutting the top of the eye at an angle. I snip off a strand of hair, wrap it around my finger, scoop it up with the needle, and plunge it into the head. It was so easy. I do it again, and again, and again, and again, and wow! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do the rest of the head now, I'll see y'all in a bit. So a little update. Through trial and error, I actually figured out the best combination for me was my old craft knife handle, the other one became too loose after a while, and an embroidery needle. The tapestry ones kept snapping on me. And here they are! I can say that while I still like rerouting with the sewing method, this way is just so much faster and more efficient, so I'll probably do it again in the future. To secure all that hair, I squeeze a generous amount of tacky glue in through the neck hole and spread it around with a cotton bud, and I leave it to dry overnight. The next day, I wrap up their hair to protect it and start work on the face. I forgot to hit record when I did the first layer, oops, <laughs> but I ended up giving them about three layers of black 3.0. I begin painting the face in the same way I painted the body, but focusing the nebulas across the cheeks and forehead, and painting their lips separately. I was originally going to have their eyes closed, and I tried freehanding this with white acrylic, but I just couldn't get it to look right, and I really didn't like it. So I scrubbed off the paint with some water and painted over the areas with black. I decided to change my approach and extended the cheek nebulas into a mask over the eye area. It was at that point that I realized I should probably reattach the head before I went much further, so I wouldn't damage the paint. Before I do, I coat the upper portion of the neck with a couple layers of Liquitex matte varnish to protect it. I'll cover the rest of the body later. I heat up the head with my hair dryer again and reattach it. I touch up the paint around the neck hole and then continue with the face. I cover up the nebula on their forehead since they have a much bigger one across their face now. Then I continue to build up the color. To help me get the eye shape I want, I sprayed the head with Mr. Super Clear so I could use my watercolor pencils to create a guideline. First in black, then in white. Using those guides, I fill in the eye shapes with black 3.0. I also add some more highlights to the nebula around where eyebrows would be. I spray another layer of MSC, and then I begin outlining the eyes with white watercolor pencil before moving on to acrylic paint.
It's time for sparkles again! I add super base to strategic spots and sprinkle on snow glitter. Then, like with the body, I dot on individual stars with white paint. Let's add some special effects, shall we? I'll be mixing some glow-in-the-dark paint using super base, blue lit, and a bit of water. I swear I'm not sponsored by Culture Hustle. I would love to be, but I just don't think that's their vibe. I just love their stuff. Some of you may remember this from Litwick's video. This time, I have paint saver pots, so I'm going to go ahead and premix a decent amount. I apply the glow-in-the-dark paint to the eye outlines, every single one of the stars, and add accents to the pink tentacles, which already glow in the dark themselves. After letting everything dry for 72 hours, following the directions on the bottle, I cover the body and head in two coats of Liquitex matte varnish, working in sections and waiting at least three hours between coats. I add Vallejo gloss varnish to the glitter areas and their lips. And what's this? Black 3.0? Again? After the sealant? That is correct! Black 3.0 is actually the darkest and most matte without sealant. So to make sure there are some true void areas, I add an extra layer of paint in a few places. Once dry, I can unwrap their hair. And here they are after a little trim and styling. Now what would a jellyfish be without a cap? I'll be using this pink iridescent organza to make it. It matches their pink tentacles perfectly, which is a happy accident. I created this petal-shaped template. I'll need six pieces to create the cap. As the fabric is fragile and will fray as soon as you look at it funny, <laughs> I only cut two pieces at a time. I attach the template with sewing clips and cut carefully around it. Once cut, I quickly use fabric glue to seal all the edges and balance them on top of paint bottles to dry. I repeat this two more times. Now I have six pieces ready to go. I'll be using more fabric glue to adhere everything together. I start by gluing two of the petals together along one edge. I use clips to keep them in place. I repeat this two more times. Now I have three pieces. I begin assembling by attaching two of the pieces along one edge with fabric glue, same as before, adding clips to hold it in place. I attach the third piece on the opposite edge, then I attach the two remaining edges together and let dry. In the middle of this, I had to take a couple of days out because I got a steroid injection in one of the joints in my dominant hand. Remember to take care of your hands and wrists, especially if you're an artist. Remember to stretch and take breaks. Don't be like me. <laughs> I carefully removed the clips with my left hand. I left them on a bit too long this time. I should have removed them before it was completely dry, so they were a bit stubborn. But I flip it inside out, and now I have a cap. Or at least the base. After another couple days of rest, and with the aid of a compression glove, I'm back in action. First, I clip the corners of the top of the cat before turning it right side out again. I'll be using glow-in-the-dark embroidery thread and clear beads to embellish the cat. I use two out of the six threads, and thread a needle that's small enough to pass through the beads. I pass my needle through one of the larger beads, then I pass it through again two more times, wrapping the thread around the bead. I 
I remove the needle, tie the two ends in a knot several times, and trim the excess. I add a small drop of fabric glue to the end to secure everything. Then I re-thread my needle with the other end of the thread and start stringing beads. I mostly use the smaller ones, but I add a couple of the larger ones in randomly. Once it's the length I want, I start sewing it onto the cap. I do a back stitch next to one of the seams adding one or two beads with each stitch. When it's as high up as I want it to go, I tie it off on the wrong side with several knots and trim the thread. I do this six times in total, one for each seam. Then I add more stripes of beads, going up the center of each petal of the cap in the same way using a back stitch. And here it is, all finished! Now I just have to put it on their head, and they're done! Slight spoiler for the Adventure Zone, but it's revealed during the Stolen Century arc that the Void Fish's name is Fisher. I really hope I was able to do Fisher justice. It certainly was a journey making them, and they're not like any other doll I've ever customized. I did try to get a good photo of the glow-in-the-dark effects, but this doesn't do it justice at all. It looks so cool in person! What do you think of Fisher? Do you listen to The Adventure Zone? Let me know what your favorite campaign and arc are. I think balance will always hold a special place in my heart. And my favorite arcs are probably Crystal Kingdom and The Suffering Game. Make sure to head on over to Instagram to see all the awesome dolls in this collab under the hashtag TazDollCollab2021. I'll leave links in the description below. You can also follow me over on Instagram at StefuDoll to see more photos, work in progress, and sneak peeks. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more from me, and click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. Until next time, bye!